Gotcha. Welcome back to episode two of my crafting tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed episode one. It turned out slightly longer than I intended, but I shot it in one sitting, so I hope it was okay. And following on from there, where we started at the very start, I guess, with you know getting yourself the artisan skill or rolling an artisan. We're gonna move on to the next sort of step today, which is choosing a crafting profession thinking a little bit about why you're crafting and what you want to achieve, um, as well as a few nuances of how crafting works. We'll craft some items and I'll explain some of the intricacies as we go um, along the way. So today we're on the finalizer server. This is one of my characters, Abe Larrick. Um, and Abe is a master chef um, and he's got a little bit of architect and he's also a master artisan. And following directly on from yesterday's session where I talked about you can run survey missions for some cash and as you progress your way up the survey tree those missions get more expensive and um, I just wanted to give you the view of how it looks when you're on a on a character that's got um, more survey skill so if I just go to Abe's skill sheet uh, Abe is a master artisan so he's got survey four if I look here on the left hand side which might not come out too well um, I've got a base survey skill of 100 and it says slash 125 and that's because I've got plus 25 additional uh, to my survey skill comes from survey tapes. Now what those tapes allow me to do is they allow me to extract more resources and up to a certain limit they allow me to change uh, the, um, uh, the range of the tools and if you see here if I go to this tool and click set range you saw me yesterday at Novice Artisan, I could see 64 meters. But now with Abe at 125 points, I can see 384 meters. So I can see a much bigger area when I'm driving around on the swoop looking for resources. Um, and it also improves the extraction rate of what I put out the ground. But just as the comparison, the comparison that I wanted to make, if I go to the Artisan terminal now, um, I can see that I can pull up to 1300 missions. I think the when I was refreshing the terminal, I think I got a 1394 mission that popped up. The interesting thing about these missions um, is as they increase in payment, they also increase in the concentration of the resources that you need to find. <laughs> Some of them throw up scenarios that I don't think are actually achievable in game. Um, so this wants me to find ferrous metal that's in a you know, concentration of 95%. I'm not sure I can find that, um, you know, mid 70s up to 80s, just over the 80 barrier is what you'll find a lot of metals go up to. This one's gemstone at 90, it's possible, um, gemstone at 95, I don't think I've seen a 95 gemstone concentration, um, they may well exist, but you can see the bigger the price, the bigger the efficiency, if I go back down the scale for a 498 mission, it's back down to 50 again. But you can get some solid values, you know, for 85s. You can find 85 metals, not a problem. So if you spend a bit of time surveying those star ports um, or shuttle ports or player cities, however you want to do it, um, you can make some good money, I think. Um, two lots of 1,300 mission, um, doing 30 of them an hour should put you, not too sure of the mental maths, but probably pushing 80,000 credits. Um, so that's good money for no costs okay no food no consumables no anything so um let's leave that from there that's that so we want to move on to talk to a few other pieces now that that's the next logical steps as you progress through i'm in i'm in kadara i've set it up because i get to see these crafting stations um and let's talk about our humble generic crafting tool the one that we had yesterday so when i look at that generic crafting tool i'm able to create uh, some different categories of things and different things. So as soon as I, you know, progress through artisan and level up um, through the trees, I'm able to craft more items. Um, if I just flick to the skill tree, this is master artisan. Surveying just gives you survey skill. Um, but some of these other ones um, give you some uh, two different categories. They give you skill mods. So you start to get things like artisan assembly and artisan experimentation. And you also start to uh, learn abilities and commands granted. These are schematics, cover that in a second. 
So as you create items, you earn experience. That experience, you go to the trainer, and convert it into the next skill box. And then you work your way up the trees, as they're commonly known, all the way to Master Artisan. And you can see when you get to the Master Artisan box, you don't learn any additional skills, but you learn some additional schematics. If you look through here, um, these are items that you need in the game, generally to make other components. Some of these control units, um, you find control units in uh, PSGs, for example, personal shield generators. If I scroll down, there's a selection of these. Um, there's a little bird cage that's a decoration item. You can see here we get to swoops. So you need to be a master artisan to be able to create a swoop because the schematic for swoop sits in the master artisan box. I think that's a relatively simple concept um, and uh, hopefully one that, that doesn't need too much explanation um, to people. So learn the boxes, um, you learn the schematics and you start to get some skills. Now, when you craft an item, I'll touch on this briefly now, um, when you put the pieces together, there's what's called the assembly roll. The assembly roll um, uh, determines how good the item is before you experiment on it. Come into that in a second. Um, so as I build the item, put the components in, um, when I hit assemble, there is an assembly roll. And I want to say off the top of my head, I think there's something like eight or nine different assembly ratings you can get. Everything from on the bad end, the item was a critical failure, um, and all the way up to the good end, which is it was an amazing success. That's the assembly role. Once you've assembled an item, if you've got the relevant skills and you're, you're in the relevant place, we'll cover that in a minute, you can then experiment on the item, and I'll show you that too. So let's start um, by doing some relatively simple crafting, okay? So with my crafting tool, these are the basic items that I can craft. And if I look at this first schematic, as probably many people do, I've got a schematic here for a bone armor left bicep. Now in this window here, um, I can make it bigger, but unfortunately the text doesn't get any bigger. Um, it tells me some things. It tells me complexity. Um, think of complexity in terms of um, defining how long it takes things to be produced in a factory. That's not the only thing it's used for, but items with lower complexity um, are crafted faster. And e also items with lower complexity, excuse me, um, give less experience. So the experience you get from crafting an item is a combination of the quantity of resources used, 15 units of bone, 15 hide, add them all together, 15 plus 15, 15 plus another 10. It's that um, in a formula with the complexity that creates the amount of experience. So you can have an item that has got less resources, but a bigger complexity can actually grant you more experience when you make it. And it will also take longer to craft it in the factory. When you craft an item, you can increase its complexity depending on how many times you experiment on it. And I'll show that stuff in a minute when we start to get into crafting. But um, what this thing does for me here is it shows me the items that I need. It says I need 15 units of bone. Um, I need 15 units of hide, 15 units of more hide, 10 units of metal. When I click the next button to come and make it, it will show me the things that I need to put to make the item. And it will show me in here which items I've got that would fit in those applicable slots. So for example, I've got some leathery hide here, and when I click it, it shows me it can go in that slot, that slot, and that slot. If I double click it, it will actually fill those three up. If I drag it all back out, I can also drag it and drop it in, double click it, okay? Sometimes you want specific ones in specific slots um, as you start to craft more complex items, but it's essentially a double click process on the item that you want. And if you keep all of the stuff in the top of your inventory, because this is looking at here, um, it's relatively easy. It also shows my backpack, because if I click in my backpack, I've also got some things that I could use for this schematic. Okay, so schematics, this is the blueprint, if you want to call it that, um, for um, making the item. It shows me the available resources and I double click them. 
The other thing it shows me is that it requires a generic crafting tool. That's the tool that I'm using, so that's pretty handy. Um, but if I look at some uh, other items, for example, if I go to um, my vehicle list, um, all I see is that I can create a customization kit. Now the game is slightly frustrating in many ways and it, it confuses a lot of early on crafters because I know that I'm a master artisan, I showed you that, and I know I can create a swoop, but the game isn't showing me the option in this tool. Well, lo and behold, there's different tools for crafting different things. Now, when you start with your generic crafting tool, you have the ability to make other tools. So there's a clothing and armor crafting tool. This is needed by tailors and armorsmiths. There is a food and chemical crafting tool. This is used by chefs, docs, medics, bioengineers, combat medics. Uh, starship crafting tool, it's used exclusively by shipwrights. Structure and furniture, you need that if you want to be an architect. Uh, weapon, droid and generic crafting item tool. Weaponsmith, uh, droid engineer, um, artisan can all make use of this tool here. So different tools for different types of crafting profession. If you come over here, you also think these things see these things called uh, crafting stations. Some items only require a crafting tool to make them. Some items require you to be standing near an appropriate crafting station. And some items require that you're standing near a private crafting station, which is essentially a copy of one of these, but inside a player building. So inside your house or inside a guild hall or some other structure that's not out here in the public. You can see even in the description, it is a public crafting station. Good example, if I walk over to the crafting station here for the um, weapon droid in general, if I use my weapon droid in general tool, this is what I can make using this tool. I look at my vehicle list, I can see I can make a speeder bike, a swoop and an X34. If I look at swoop, it says requires a specialized crafting tool. If I look at X34, it requires a specialist crafting tool and a crafting station. So what that means is whilst I stand next to this crafting station, I can create the item. If I walk away from the crafting station, I open the tool, X34 has disappeared as an option. I've only got speeder bike and swoop. It's kind of frustrating, I think, for a lot of early crafters because the game doesn't tell you this. A lot of people um, uh, level their way through a skill um, and they're like, but it says here I can make the item, but I can't make the item. Now, um, that's just one of those things that I think, you know, a quick question in general chat or asking someone else, you know, gets you past. But um, I think it can be quite frustrating for a new crafter because it doesn't tell you that. It doesn't list it, but say you can't make it. It doesn't list it. Come back over here again. And X34 is back on the list to be made. Equally, if I'm here with my general uh, crafting tool, I can see vehicles, but I can't actually make any vehicles. because It's the wrong type of tool. So to make a swoop, I need one of these tools next to one of these stations and we're good to go. And that's, you know, that's the, you know, the basis of um, starting to craft. Um, but before then, I think it's probably worth touching on now is um, what do you want to craft? And firstly, and secondly, why do you want to craft? And actually you could, you may be able to switch those around. I craft um, for a couple of reasons. I craft because everything I craft um, has my name in it, okay? So this pair of boots uh, was made by Mularic and um, I made them. And everyone knows that I made them. And I like that, um, I like, um, leaving a digital footprint in a game that ties to an avatar that's tied back to me. If I make something absolutely amazing, it's got my name on it. If I make something absolutely rubbish, I'll probably throw it away, <laughs> destroy it, right? And it'll be gone. But this says it was made by me. And I take a little bit of personal pride in that. I like the fact that these things exist in this game world if I choose to move on from it. 
and I leave some bit of me behind. Um, so that's one reason I like to craft. The second reason I like to craft, especially in this game, um, is due to the complexity. Now, anybody can make 80% uh, kinetic composite boots. It's not a complicated process. Um, a few simple steps, watch a little video um, of how to do it and you can make it. Um, the skill for me in crafting, and this is where this game differs from other games, is this game has a dynamic resource engine, which means that unlike WoW, for example, where you put one of them, one of them, one of them, and everybody gets the same result, this game has the ability to change the resources you use and get a different result. There's a cap where you know you can hit the cap if you've got resources that meet those sort of needs, but the difference between the beginning and the cap is very broad, and you have the ability to influence the items. We'll come into more complex elements of that, um, which you can see a lot in Armorsmith and you can see a lot in Chef later on. But if I show you a really quick example, um, I can do it right now, and we'll do it by making a power up. So I'm going to use my crafting tool. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to come here to a generic uh, melee weapon kit, which is a melee power up. It says I need a generic crafting tool um, and I'm using a, a, a weapon droid and general. OK, so it covers it off um, and it says I require six units of mineral and four units of chemical. Now, if I get my survey tool for a second, this is relatively simple for me because I've been playing the game for a long time, but all of the resources in the game fall under categories. With this mineral serving tool, if I collapse the whole tree, everything under this is inorganic. If I open that tree to the next step, this mineral serving tool shows me minerals. And the minerals are broken down into gemstone, low grade ore, metal and radioactive. If I open the metals, it's broken down into ferrous and non-ferrous metals. If I open the ferrous, it's broken down into iron and steel. Again, where I'm going here. And then when I open the iron, it will show me different types of iron. There's only polonium iron available on the boo right now. Uh, steels, there's three different types of steels, carillium steel, neutronium steel, and geranium steel. So everything in the tree, as I would call it the resource tree, has a bunch of labels and the resources call out for specific things in the tree. So this item here wants a mineral. So minerals, I could make this power up with six units of any of this. I could put gemstones in this power up. I could put ore in it, metals and radioactive. And if I click next, you can see in the metal slot here, I can put this steel. I can also put this solid petrochemical fuel. Both of them are applicable for this slot here. Um, I can also put this radioactive in this slot here. It also wants uh, four units of chemical. And here I've got fibroplast, two different types. And they could also be used. If I go into my backpack, it will show just to that prove that point, I could use gemstones to go in here. Now, that means there's a lot of possibilities. Bear in mind that the way this dynamic resource system works is all of these resources that are shown, these named resources, this uh, dual crystalline gemstone called Kofo, um, this is only going to exist in the galaxy and in the game world for a fixed period of time. Resources in Star Wars Galaxy shift in and shift out. It's not like hitting an iron node in most games, right? Whether that's Dark Fall or New World or... Um, you know, hitting an ore node in WoW. Um, this will only exist for a fixed, finite period of time. There will be other types of dual, dual crystalline gemstone, but this particular one called Kofo will only exist for a specific period of time. And the time ranges. I think it's something like five days to 25 days on the broad scale. OK, we don't need to get into the intricacies of just how long resources last for. Some are shorter, some are longer. You learn it over time. I think I might paste um, a link to a picture or something in the bottom of a video that shows that type of stuff. But essentially, I could use lots of options. 
And when I said that I'll enjoy the flexibility of why do I craft, um, it's because of things like this. If I use this steel, um, which is absolutely fine, the also thing it tells me down here is it wants, uh, I have the ability to uh, make the item and the effect of it is going to be determined by the overall quality of the resource. Now, for those that haven't crafted any at all, this is where it gets a little bit complicated for a lot of people. Um, partially because there's this thing called overall quality and overall quality, which you can't see very well, is one of the attributes of the resource. So this resource, this steel, has multiple attributes. It's got a value for cold resistance, value for conductivity, value for decay resistance, heat resistance, malleability, overall quality, shock resistance, and unit toughness. Whoever chose to name this one overall quality was an evil person because it, it's not the overall quality of the resource. It's just the, the attribute called overall quality. It could be called cup of tea. So it would be malleability, cup of tea, and shock resistance. It really doesn't matter what these things are called. Some of them make logical sense when you start talking about unit toughness, the way that that impacts things. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attributes to this item. The only thing this power up is interested in is the attribute called overall quality. It doesn't care what the unit toughness is. It doesn't care what the cold resistance is. This value of 330 cold resistance is not going to impact this item whatsoever. It's only interested in this 642 overall quality and it's going to impact it 100%. So now we start to get into a bit of maths. Um, resources generally operate in a range of zero to a thousand. I say generally because some operate in a tighter bandwidth, zero to 500, um, 900 to a thousand. But generally most statistics or attributes on most resources operate in a zero to 1000 range. Okay, the overall quality on steel, for example, could come out at one, it could come out at a thousand. So if you take some simple maths, and that's why we start with this, um, this is a 64% effective resource to use because it's got 642. Do some maths, turn it into a percentage. It wants 100%, 642. Okay, so I'll stick my 64% useful resource in that slot. Now it wants this other slot. I've got two choices. Okay, I've got this resource with 748 overall quality and this resource with 928 overall quality. If I use this one here and then I assemble it, it says once you do it, you can't go back. That's fine. You consume those resources. Um, it rolls for the assembly and it gave me a great success. Now that roll for the success on the assembly is determined by my artisan assembly skill. Plus, the quality of the crafting tool that I'm using. And in theory, but not in reality, the quality of the crafting station. Um, the crafting station is in everyone's view part of the calculation, but the reality was when Sony programmed the game, they never included it. So in the how it should work is it should be the resource plus the tool plus um, the crafting station plus any modifiers for food and drink plus any modifiers for um, tapes although you could build that into the skill plus any modifiers for Jedi skills that type of thing um, but in this simple example it's using the tool and it's using the resources uh, sorry my skill and coming up with this assembly result. Um, and I think if you know, I think there's nine um, great successes, eight out of nine, okay? Because the crafting tool is pretty good, okay? So that's sort of that, that, that sort of thing. The crafting tool is good and I've got loads of skill points in assembly. So um, just to show you that, um, as I look at artisan, if you go up this tree here, you start to get artisan assembly skill. Um, 
and if I look on this left hand side I've got a hundred artisan assembly. If I have to give some sort of rough guidance, um, if you get a hundred in the assembly skill and your tool is about 13 or better rating, most of the roles that you do will be on the seven or eight out of nine. Okay, there'll be great successes. Okay, this is the staple situation you're going to be in once you've mastered your crafting profession and you have a tool that has a rating of something like 13 or 14. Okay, the maximum these tools can go to is 15. Okay, so it's pretty much at the top end of the tool and um, the skill points I get from mastering artisan most of my roles are going to be great successes okay um, there's always percentages that you go to an amazing and there's percentages that will you know there's situations where you'll come down um, but most of the roles are going to be like this so it says that the effectiveness of this item is 17 percent if I click next it tells me um, a little bit about the power up that I'm making but we'll cover that later when I click next I've got the option to experiment because I'm standing next to a crafting station. If you're not standing next to a crafting station, you can't experiment. And you can see here on the left hand side, it's just give an overview of this interface, what it's doing. It shows me the item, not of interest, it tells me the complexity. It's not really of interest, but we'll look at that in a second. It gives me the statistics of the item. And it says here I've got 10 experimentation points. OK, when you master a profession, um, and you go up this tree, you get your experimentation points. You can see here I've got 100 experimentation points. And for every 10 points, I get one point to experiment on the item. OK. Um, it's possible to increase that um, up to a bonus of plus 20 to allow you an extra two points for experimenting. That's why people call themselves a 12 point chef. That's how I would refer to myself. I'm a 12 point chef. I don't have 10 experimentation points. I can have 12. In theory, on a lot of items, it means you can produce a better item. But what really changes the quality of the item is the quality of the resources. So uh, here we are in this situation. I've got 10 points. It starts at 17 percent. You can see here I can experiment. I can experiment um, six points in one go or I can experiment one point. If I do one point, nothing moves on this bar over the right hand side. This is the risk factor. Uh, the risk factor that the experimentation roll is going to be good or bad. If I put all in, you see I've got 25% risk built into the item. Um, and if I run the experiment in this scenario, I can see that it was a great excess, great success, sorry. The item is now 59% quality let's call it and you can see the the statistics has moved up not a lot because i didn't show it too much so we'll just throw it away go back in craft it again uh, we use the 748 make it all barely succeeded so now i'm lower down on the success roll i said a lot of it comes as great success the next one doesn't and this is only starts at six percent now Interestingly, it doesn't change the length of the bar. The length of the bar is determined by the quality of the resources. Um, but it reduces the starting value. So you can see this starts at 2.6. Um, if I max out the line, it will let me do that. You can see I can get to one of the stats to be 22.79%. Okay. When I talk about resource quality, this is where this thing starts to play in, but you've got to be watching for it. You learn it over time. Same resources go in at great success back to the 17. Experiment it up. The most I can get it to with points to spare is 68%. Okay, so 68%. And that takes the item from whatever it was up to 22.9% you know, for this particular mod. Okay, 68%. If I go back in to make the item again, same steel, but use this other fiberplast, 
that's got higher overall quality. I've got my great success, but I start at 19. So I start further along the path of making a great item because I've got better resources. Now when I experiment and max it out, it goes to 75%. And you'll see that instead of going to 22, I can get to 25. I hope everyone's following. The quality of the resources that the schematic is demanding affect the length of the bar. The assembly roll affects how far you start along that bar, not the length. And then when you experiment, the item gets better and the better resources means you can get a better overall effectiveness for that particular stat and that makes a better item. Let's see if I can find something else in my inventory. It's got something that's not so good. So here we go. So I can use this radioactive. The overall quality is only 563, right? Um, I don't pay much attention to the colors these days, but you can see it's saying it's not the best item, Larrick, right? But I can double click it and it goes. I can use this uh, low quality uh, chemical. Um, in fact, yeah, that's the only thing I can put in that slot. So when I make this item, it was a great success. You can see it starts at 15. And the bar is shorter. So even though I've got 10 points, I can't use them all. As it happens, I can only use seven of my 10 points. And the maximum this item can get to now is 63%. And on here, 21.24. Okay. Switch it round. Uh, what have I got on here? 868 on there, plus 928 in there. Now I start at 25, start further along the bar. As it happens, the bar is now longer and you can see that bar changing length. And I experiment all the way up here, which is going to cost me all my 10 points to get all the way up. It's now at 29%. So the quality of the resources massively impacts the item quality that you can make. Okay. The tool is just for the roles for assembly and for the roles for experimentation, um, but it's all about the resources. So why do I like to craft in Star Wars Galaxies? Because as a dynamic resource engine that allows me to use a very, very broad range of resources in a particular item, there would literally be thousands of resources, tens of thousands of resources um, over time that I could make this power up out of. But each time a resource spawns, um, it gets given a name and the statistics are locked to it. So this particular steel, this neutronium steel called Vibo, um, it's unique. This resource is unique. It's never going to exist again. Um, it's never going to be harvestable again. It existed at a period of time and that time is past. It rolled with these stats they're fixed to the item and it's what you would call unique now when it spawns it spawns on single or multiple planets and people can harvest millions of units of it but once it's gone whatever's been extracted that's what the server is playing with in terms of how much of that resource there is and i could use it for this i could use it for something else um i could you know take my stack split my stack um, you know, take 300 off and just destroy it. It's gone. Okay, there's now 300 units left of this in the galaxy. Um, and that's what I like about crafting. So, um, one, when I craft an item, it's got my name on it. And two, the complexity um, uh, or the options, I should say, uh, are vast. Really, really vast. Now, um, it's not difficult to get another resource to spawn with 900 plus quality. Um, but this is the most basic item we're crafting. OK, um, some items uh, you can't experiment on at all. Um, let me find if I go here. 
Um, what have we got? Uh, I could craft a camp kit. Okay. So if you're a scout, you want wilderness survival experience, you need to craft some camps. Okay, wants hide and bone. Uh, I've got some bone. And I've got some hide. Um, and it says all the same things. You know, it's interested in hide and bone. But it doesn't reference any quality. And I've got no option to experiment. It still did the assembly role. <laughs> right? Because it's just part of crafting. Um, but whether this was, you know, rubbish or fantastic, it makes no difference because this item has got no stats. It just exists. I've created a camp. It has no stats. The quality of the resources I used do not matter. And I can't experiment on it. I can change the color of the camp kit. Right? Um, lots of options on color palettes to change the to change how this looks in the world which is another thing i think is just awesome i don't you know i've got two different color palettes to choose from and i've got what one two three four five six i've got two times eight grids six by eight. i couldn't do the maths of the combinations someone will um it's a lot of combinations and I could craft this um, and it would be unique. You know, I'll go for the green green. OK, and the other thing I can do, I can change the name of it. Uh, Larix bivy. Go fishing, cart fishing. Not often, but I don't have a bivy. But if I did uh, use a fishing tent called a bivy, then, you know, that could be quite funny for a lot of people. So uh, here we go. Larix bivy. In fact, I'm going to go for the snow version. OK, because we're going to go ice fishing in the Arctic. This is Larix Bivy. And I can create that object. And that obj object will exist in the world. You see here, it's going to take a few seconds to make it. It has a little number on the tool. And there we go. Larix Bivy exists in the world. Right, it's got a name. It was made by me. Now, once I use it, it's going to go, right, and not exist in the world anymore. And if I right click and destroy, it doesn't exist in the world anymore either. But that's why I enjoy crafting. Now, a lot of people think I craft because I want to make loads of credits. No, um, making loads of credits is just a mechanism for me that helps me buy the things I need to do crafting. You know, I buy resources from people. I buy um, tapes to improve my skills. So if you look here uh, under my skills for chef, um, you can see I've got my experience um, down here. Food assembly. I've got 100 stroke 125 and my experimentation for food is 100 stroke 125. Now that means uh, that's coming from the fact that I've got clothing where I've bought attachments and for food assembly and food experimentation. I've put them in. You can get plus 25 bonus and I've got plus 25 in each. Now, the five points for experimentation don't mean too much. They, they do mean something in the calculation. Um, we started talking about fractions of improving chances of, of amazing experimentations. But um, plus 20 experimentation will get you two more points. So if I was to make a chef item. Um, what am I going to be able to make where I'm going to have the things on me that's going to require experimentation? Uh, let's just do this dough. Uh, it's not an experimentable item. So that's a bad choice. I certainly also need to be next to the food crafting station. Uh, Everything that I'm going to pick here from this food list is going to require food additive, which I don't have on me. And everything else that doesn't is going to not be a chef item. It's going to be a food item, uh, artisan food. So we'll skip that for the moment. We'll go back to my, uh, my house later in a different video and I'll show you some more intricacies of food crafting. But I would have 12 points, not 10 points. Now, some items, as you see from that uh, example with that power up when the resources weren't good I couldn't even use the 10 points I could only use six or seven and um, in order to 
go from 0 to 100% effectiveness on an item would only ever take you 10 points. The reason that um, you get more points or you would want more points is when items have more than one line to experiment on. So if I give you an example, when I make armor, I can experiment on how good the armor is, the quality of it. I can experiment on how heavy it is, so the ham cost, and I can experiment on the um, uh, condition of the item, how much wear and tear. So if I show you that particular item, I can experiment on here to determine how good it is. I can experiment on this up here to increase the condition of it. And I can experiment here to reduce the encumbrance. Now, if you've got three lines and you've got, you know, let's assume all your resources were perfect. So you've got three lines of 30 or three lines of 10 to give you a total of 30 possible things you could do. And um, I could only do 12 of them, right? So at some point, if the resources get good, the crafter has to start picking and choosing. That's what starts making these items more unique. Yes, you can make items with 80% kinetic resistance relatively easy, but I can make items with good kinetic resistance and low hat. Okay, and that's where you start to build a brand as a crafter. That's where your crafts are known at being as better than somebody else's. And um, because it's the combination of how you put the resources together into the schematic, which ones you're using with which stats, because you know which ones you're going to want to experiment on. That's a lot easier to show you when I talk about armor smith or chef. And um, that can mean that you can make items in a particular way or you intend to and do make items in a particular way that other people don't okay so um finally on this very simple example um on this uh, let's make sure we're close enough to the station uh touching back on complexity again if i look at this uh, item here doesn't matter really what i use you can see the item it's got a complexity of seven. If I experiment all the way up the line and then uh, finish it off, it's got a complexity of nine. Okay. If I make that item again and I increment experiment on the item one box at a time, it's now complexity eight, it's now complexity nine. Now 10. So it's less risky, the chance that the experimentation goes wrong and you don't fill the next box um, or you go backwards. Um, it goes forwards every time for me because I've got lots of assembly skill and experimentation skill. But this now has a complexity of 15. Now that increases the amount of experience it's going to get me if I was crafting it and I was leveling up. But it also significantly increases the amount of time it's going to take to make this in a factory. Nearly doubled the amount of time it's going to make in a factory. Well, not quite double, but 9 to 15 is a significant increase. Okay. For every two of these, I'm making three of those. Um, so sometimes when you craft, you have to think a little bit. It shouldn't be the driving factor that changes how you craft. But if you're creating items that aren't of any you know, real quality... Do yourself a favor and max the line as quick as possible with the minimum amount of experiments. Um, equally, if you're, you've not got a lot of resources and you're leveling your way through the profession um, and you're trying to maximize those resources and time is not a factor, yeah, do all those little increments to make that item more complex and you'll get more XP. A lot of people don't, but you know it's a mechanic um, and it's good that people understand what it's actually doing. So that's basic crafting. Why do I craft? Because I want my name on items and I like the uniqueness of what I can make. So does it matter what I make? Um, and I think that's a different question. Um, and I'll give you a rough guide to the professions and what determines it. And I'll try and wrap that up in, in not too long. There's quite a few crafting professions. If I go through and look at all the professions that you can have in the galaxy, 
Um, artisan is the starting one and you can see from artisan you have to have it to get to chef you have to have it to get to tailor you've got to go up this tree to get to tailor got a little bit of tailor um, so if you go back uh, chef tailor droid engineer shipwright weaponsmith armorsmith architect and then there's some that aren't listed here because they don't originate in master artisan like bioengineer because it originates in scout and medic and dock crafting originates in medic as well okay so dock combat medic and medic crafting all start with the starting profession of medic uh, bioengineer combat medic and doctor okay uh, doctor has uh, stuff over here this is where you get all the schematics for doctor uh, to be able to buff somebody you need this skill here this is where you get the buffing skill um so there's lots of different things you can um, that you can craft and in my time yeah I think in my time I've been all of them um, I was a shipwright in live I was a bioengineer in the combat upgrade um, on liberator I was a weaponsmith on basilisk I was a weaponsmith armorsmith architect Dark combat medic, artisan. Um, I'm now a chef and finalizer. Um, does it matter what I craft? Maybe not. But I would put crafting and the items you craft probably into a couple of uh, categories. Oh, and a smuggler. I always forget smuggler um, because the resources don't matter and you can't experiment, right? So smugglers kind of, you know, it's crafting, but it's not really crafting. Um, poor man's crafting I would call smuggler um if someone tells you they're the server best moon gold crafter you know have a little giggle to yourself because <laughs> it all comes out exactly the same regardless of what resources you put in it um but um if I put things in categories uh consumables um people use them they don't last for very long and then they're gone if I look at uh this food uh, this piece of food I would consider it a consumable I've double click it I've eaten it it's going to last down here for 59 minutes and then it's gone okay it's a consumable uh, power-ups are consumables in my mind food is consumables drinks are consumables um, uh, what else uh, weapon upgrade kits for slicing um, they're required to achieve something and then they're gone on the other hand you've got uh, let's just call them forevers okay and um, forevers are things like uh, and in my inventory da, 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 da. But if I go to my data pad uh, this uh, swoop I've got this swoop here came from a deed uh, if I look after it well it's a forever item my house is a forever item my harvesters currently because I'd love it to be changed are forever items they can decay but I can repair them back to maximum and they can continue in the world forever I could go to my house now I could put 20 years of maintenance on it probably um, and it will be there for that long okay um so that's a forever item and then you've got items that you buy and then you use them over time um, and a good example of that is a weapon uh, this d18 pistol um, or this piece of armor that I'm wearing okay crafted by me as it happens um, this has a condition it will go down and I can repair it but it's always on a decline you can never repair back up to the total that it started with okay so yes you can wear this from 35,000 and it go down to 30,000 and you can repair it it will go back up but it won't go back up to the starting value it would always be on the decline so at some point if I repair this enough it's going to be gone I can't have it forever unless I take it off stick it in my house and never use it um, and as I play through the game and this is the uh, fourth time I've played through the game live liberator server that was an emu server um, Basilisk emu server and now finalizer emu server as I've played through the game for the fourth time 
This is the fourth time I've made a Blarink. Um, as I go through that process, um, my view on the server and how long it's going to be and what I think it's going to be like in some way determine the craft that I want. When I start the game, um, I want to be able to create factories because I need factories to make items when I'm not playing the game. Um, and that's part of having a business inside the game. And if I'm an architect, I can make the factories. I don't, I don't rely on anybody else. So when I started Finalizer, I started Abe as an architect. So I could make factories. I could build my house. I could build some harvesters. Over time, I've dropped those skill points. I don't need them anymore because my house is a forever item. I haven't got that skill because I want to sell them. I've got it because I need to make it. So over time, I changed my crafting profession. Currently, I'm chef uh, on Abe. Why? Um, because um, there's not so much demand for weapons and armor, um, which are probably some of the most fun crafting professions because um, they require lots of subcomponents. In case I forget to say why. Um, uh, because there's lots of Jedi on the server because the village is accelerated. So there becomes more demand for consumable items because everyone likes food and drink and Jedi eat and drink a lot okay um, they're drinking uh, foods to help with particular statistics for example all of the time right if you find a Jedi that's not eating some food or drink I'll be very surprised um, but I could walk around as a craft or an entertainer and I might not be eating and drinking all of the time it's one one food for crafting one drink for crafting so I changed my mind on what to craft based on whether I think I want to make consumable items, forever items, and the complexity of the items. Now I think you could stack rank crafting in a particular order from um, simple to complex. And if I edit this video, I'll probably splice it and put a little thing and somewhere over there now, right? It'll pop up over there somewhere over there um around here on the screen i'll put down the sequence of what i think is crafting professions in terms of complexity complexity um comes from the resources that are needed and the specific nature of those resources um whilst we were looking at this resource tree on mineral um there's nothing specific in here that ties it to a planet okay some of these resources well these are all on the boo and some of these will be on other planets but in the mineral list there's nothing that's personal to a planet and um, so if you go into the flora list everything is personal to the planet so not only is this vegetable beans it's nabooian vegetable beans because i'm on the boo if I was to go to another planet, there will be vegetable beans, but it will be Talus vegetable beans or Corellian vegetable beans or Dantooine vegetable beans. So the amount of resources that a schematic might want or the rarity of the resources can change between professions. Um, right down on the left hand side of the easiness, so I would sort of was on my desk, um, spice crafting uh, just needs a material it needs to be that material, so radioactive, the stats don't matter, the planet doesn't matter, um, and it will be asking for resources that are higher up the tree. Okay, so it'll be asking for inorganic. Okay. Um, if you get to uh, making armor um, on composite armor, for example, you need uh, Nabooian fibroplast. So where I, while smuggler might require a resource that I would call a level zero, composite armor requires an item that's level four. It's probably a good way to explain it. But if I was to switch to my uh, armor smith, um, it wouldn't be one level four item. It would be multiple level four items because it wants Nabooian fibroplast. It wants woolly hide, not hide. Um, oh, it's not planet specific. 
it wants a solid petrochem known solid petrochemical fuel not just petrochemical fuel it wants uh, barrelless copper not not just copper but barrelless copper so there's a complexity in the crafting professions that's about how far down this tree it wants a particular resource um, so for me um, at the top of that stack um, in some ways is Armorsmith um and you'll see that when i you know or you look at my other armorsmith video or you'll see uh, when you look at things like padded it requires quite a lot of specific resources um especially for an early game armor um and if you look at weaponsmith weaponsmith wants lots of different types of resources um whereas on the other hand some require very few resources on the easy side smuggler to make moon gold, I think it needs three re three resources. Okay, um, if you were to create a, a buff pack for a doctor, you need about nine. If I was to make um, something uh, composite armor, I need maybe about eleven. Okay, <clears throat> so for me, crafting or enjoyment from crafting comes in the complexity. It comes in the type of enhancers that you use. So for Armorsmith, I could be using Janta Hide. I could be using Rancor Hide. Um, I could be using Night Sister Shards or Night Sister Layers and combinations of all of those enhancers on top of the schematic. Um, whereas Smuggler, you can't do anything to make Moon Gold any better. It's just three resources. Put them together, chuck in a factory, job's done. So entry level crafting complex crafting um, there's a scale I'll rank them I'll stick them up on the screen um, and you know you'll know my opinion so um, what I don't do though I don't craft to make money um, I craft because I enjoy crafting now some crafting professions um, generate more cash than others some that people don't think too much if you take that um, that humble, uh, that humble uh, melee weapon kit requires six units of mineral and four units of chemical. Okay. Now, when those come out of the factory, they come out of a box, and there's ten of them. Okay. Um, really simple maths, but I'm still going to get a calculator out anyway. So, if I want to make a thousand of those, okay, um, and make a factory run. Um, I need 10,000 resources, 6,000 mineral, 6,000 chemical, 10,000. Let's say I bought it for two CPU. Um, total cost of resources, 20,000 credits. OK, when you buy those factory crates, a thousand of those factory crates, you're going to pay. Somewhere between a thousand per crate and maybe 5,000 a crate. OK. So if someone's charging you 5,000 a crate and they made a thousand of them, that's 500,000 credits to buy what you would call a full run. And it cost them 20,000 to make it. Now, that's quite a lot of credits per unit. In terms of making that item, that's a very healthy profit margin, right? 20,000 resources plus a bit of factory time. 5,000. 500,000 income when you sell all of them, right? Um, they're a consumable item. They're not a forever item. So you sell all these power-ups and then people coming back to buy more power-ups and then more power-ups. You sell someone a house, see ya, gone. Uh, I'll see you again, never. So you know, the architect, I think, is the toughest profession. Um, really close, actually, with droid engineer. Um, because once they've made their item and people have bought it, they're gone. There's not a lot of repeat custom. Um, I've got a droid that's got a medical crafting unit. I've got one in that's got an armor crafting unit and a generic one, right? So I've got a few droids on a different tune, um, but maybe only three. And then I don't need to visit the droid engineer again ever uh, in the history of the game, unless I've got some specific need or it was really early game and the modules they were using weren't very good. So I can get a better crafting rating out of the tool. But you know what? They're pretty easy to max. 
Um, so I'm never going to visit the guy again. I will, however, continue to visit somebody who's making food and drink because they're consumables. This thing's only got 47 minutes left and it's gone from the world forever. Um, so um, when I pick my crafting profession, I'm thinking about what do I want to make out of the item? Why do I want to make it? Um, do I want a crafting profession where I'm going to build a relationship up with customers? Um, do I want a crafting relationship where I can just stick my vendor stuff on the vendor and it sells? You don't need a relationship with your smuggler who's selling you moon gold. Um, you're never going to take them anything probably that they want. There's no enhancements for you to go and loot and then take back to them and sell them or you know negotiate a better item for a reduced price. The items are very simple. So complexity, uh, enhancements, they're all the things that drive me into a particular crafting profession, not the cash. But it's important to understand the cash element because then it also means am I playing a crafting profession where I'm going to actually be able to make the things I want to make. You know, if I want to be a weaponsmith because I want to make an Acclay power hammer, where am I going to get my Acclay bones from? Am I going to go down the geo caves solo or with a group of friends to go and loot some? Am I going to buy some in the game? Am I going to buy some on the trade forums? Um, but how am I going to get the thing that I need to make the item? You know, as an armor smith, I would like to go to the Death Watch bunker and craft a Mandalorian helmet. I haven't done it. I'd kind of like to tick it off, but I can't go solo as an armor smith and go and craft a Mando helmet. I need a group. So I've either got to join a guild, or I've got to get a group of people to come together with me to the Death Watch bunker, right? So how do I achieve my crafting goals? Is also a factor, and that determines a little bit for me how I play right um so that's it i hope that's the entry level crafting i've explained a bit about assembly and experimentation we'll cover buffs in a later video but that's the essence of crafting um you've got a schematic tells you what you need you pay attention to what it's asking for the other stats don't matter um, and how good the resources are depend on how good you can make your final item top that off with a I craft what I want to craft because I want it to be fun and engaging um, and create a rapport with my customer base. Um, and that helps in some, you know, some sales and marketing things. Um, and it helps put, you know, in this particular case at the moment, 11 million credits in my bank. Um, you know, more than some, less than lots, right? Um, so that's it. That's part two. And on part three, we'll go into some more detail around the specific crafting professions and the resources that are needed and how to get the most out of your crafting profession. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Ta-da.